Today is Wednesday, October 12th, and this is a regular meeting of the Advisory Committee on Sustainability. We have a quorum. The meeting's being called to order at 12.03. Um, the meeting is being held in person and by video conference for the first time, a hybrid meeting. Um, on the town's go-to meeting platform, as indicated on the agenda posted with the town clerk and on the town's website. And the first item to on our agenda is to approve the minutes, which maybe we'll move that down since Christine's not here yet. She will be late. Um, the second thing on the agenda is I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, the first being that I received an email from Linda O'Leary with a letter of appointment um, for a new member to the Advisory Committee on Sustainability. Amanda Craig was approved by the Board of Selectmen and she's very excited about joining this committee. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to be here today only because um, you know, she has a business and she you know schedules out in advance so she is planning to be at our next meeting next month um, but I did have a very nice phone call with her last Friday just talking about the committee and the work that we've done in the past year and in the last few years and some of you who have been on the committee for a couple of years may remember that she actually came to several of our meetings a few years ago um, when she was doing some work with the dairy and environmental group so um, she Yes, she, she said she was very excited about this and in particular what I'm very excited about is that she is interested in kind of helping us make that entree into the schools. Um, she has an elementary age child and one in middle school, so um, that's like two bases to cover. Mm -hmm. So um, I look forward to her being at our meeting next month. She said, you know, she'll just for the time being, she's just getting used to, you know, what we're doing and she just kind of kind of wants to absorb what we're doing. I talked about our application process and so forth. So anyway, that I did want to make that announcement. Very excited about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is just take 60 seconds sort of for a um, kind of like a public service announcement. Um, which has to do with a recent Board of Selectmen meeting that um, I watched the other night and I think everyone should watch this meeting and front and center at the meeting was our very own Craig Flaherty <laughs> um, and the meeting had to do with um, basically like how the town um, response, you know, the uh, Darian's emergency preparedness res and response and Craig, there, there were a series of speakers at the meeting, and um, Craig started it off by kind of giving a history of flooding and some of the studies that have been done on the various watersheds in Darien. Um, he talked about coastal versus river flooding, which was something that I had not thought about before, but it was um, very interesting to hear that distinction and why flooding is happening more now. And then there was a report from Chief Anderson about the steps that the Darien police take when there's a big storm event, when a big storm event is expected. And um, David Nauf, the health director, talked about how the health department is involved both before, during, and after big storm events. And there was some extremely helpful information on food safety and like things like what to have on hand before a big storm event. And then Mark McEwen, who is the emergency manager, management director, talked about federal assistance that's mm -hmm. available for folks who are hit hard. Jerry, Jeremy Ginsburg, our director of public um, planning and zoning, um, talked about you know, steps that the town can take in terms of development um, and also sort of some of the limits because mm -hmm. some of it has to do with um, you know, steps that residents can take. And then Ed Gentile, our director of public works, um, used a term that I hadn't heard before, but which, Craig, I'm sure you're very familiar with, flood hardening, which are steps that um, residents and businesses can take to kind of protect their homes or their businesses from flooding. And it was just a term I hadn't heard before. And he also discussed things that the town takes, um, ongoing ma uh, maintenance and mitigation efforts that the town takes talked about cleaning out storm basins and clean up after the storms, but he also emphasized things that residents can and should do 
um, prior to big storm events. Like he said, some of the, the debris that they pull out is, you know, like play equipment, um, it's gardening equipment. Um, this is stuff that's pulled out from culverts and things that are blocking things, logs, um, lawn furniture, um, you know, and he just really, really emphasized that if you're in a water, um, in a flood basin, or if you have a water body like a brook or a pond or something near your home, you know, that's not the place to store these items, that these items, you know, if, if they're out there before a big storm event, they should be moved away because they will be washed into, you know, these water bodies, and it, it exacerbates the um, flooding, the problems with flooding. So. I just wanted to, you know, like I said, take a minute to talk about this um, Board of Selectmen meeting, um, which was on October 3rd. It was extremely comprehensive and educational. I had a ton of useful information. And so for anyone who's listening, I strongly encourage you to go on TV 79 um, and just stream this meeting because it was really, really good. So Craig, thank you for that because I, I think this is just information that is just you know, it's just becoming more and more timely, and um, I just think people need to listen to this. So, um, so there's that. Um, so I'm just gonna back up again um, and go back to approving past minutes. Hi, Christine. We're um, being filmed by TV79 right now. Sorry, so, um, <laughs> did uh, you to see, like, uh, ten seconds on your public service announcement. Oh okay. yes, go ahead, please. Yeah. As an example. Uh, you know, people needing to be full of value for these public information sessions is that I just read a stat today that only half of the people in flood zones in the counties that were under a mandatory evacuation order in Florida during Ian, only half of the houses in those floodplains had flood insurance. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's not required. You know, some people decided that maybe they can live without it, or some people didn't know. Maybe some people chose that they didn't want the expense. But anyway. right, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, it's surprising when you hear that statistic. Um, so yeah, no, that was a really fabulous meeting, and I was happy to see that the room was full. I mean, you know, there were a lot of people here in person. But again, it is available on TV79, available for streaming. It's October 3rd, Board of Selectmen meeting. It's the first hour or so, Craig. I mean, it's a fairly long meeting, but it was a, the presentations are over in the first hour. Each one is, is you know, just a few minutes long. But very, very um, important and informational. So, um, so that was great. Just wanted to get that out there. Um, so, Christine, thank you for the minutes. Um, the only thing that I have, um, I wasn't able to make the changes on the minutes because it, I, I had to request permission to make the changes. Oh, but no, I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> the only thing I have is under, um, let's see, it was under recycling and it had to do with um, the permit fees. Um, Right, okay, so where it says our costs for removal have gone up to $99 a ton due to increased usage of our facility. I would just say <clears throat> period after $99 a ton because there's, there's like a lot of reasons why the, the sure. prices have gone up. So um, I would just put a period there. Okay, um, does I any, you access. Okay, great. <laughs> um, and then you'll file those with the town clerk. Um, does anyone else have uh, any comments on the minutes from the September 4th meeting? I move to approve those amendments. Second, great, all in favor? Great, thank you so much, Christine. Um, so the next item on our agenda, I was going to ask if anyone had any objections to changing the order of the agenda because I want to have a discussion about the swap shop and um, Dan has to leave early and that's d later on. So any objections to changing the order? No. Okay. No objection. So um, we'll talk about the swap shop. There's lots to say about it, but I just, you know, we'll let Dan start, you know, just kind of give us an update on like what's going on. Well, and the, the swap shop's been very, very slow. Um, it's slowest that I've seen in a long time. Even on a Saturday, it's extremely uh, slow. So nothing, you know, going on, just 
No uh, issues with people wanting to come in, have access, and not being able to gain no, access? No, it's, it's <laughs> maybe you have two cars. I was there, you know, uh, about 30 minutes ago, and there were only two cars. And during the day, maybe four, five cars at any point in time. So it's been very, very, very slow. I don't know why, but, uh, mm -hmm. but the good news is uh, yesterday, uh, a friend of mine on the, um, on the uh, uh, Boy Scout board, who, uh, you know, they now are online yeah. to uh, sell their goods, uh, said to me that she comes in probably once a week to pick up, you know, items for the uh, Boy Scouts. And she said 10 to 20 percent of the items that are sold online for the Boy Scouts come from the swap shop. Oh, really? That to me was, I couldn't believe it, 10 to 20 percent. It's great. So there are a lot of things that are happening at the swap shop we're not even, we don't even realize right. it, uh, at this point in time. So besides the, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the charities that come in mm -hmm. uh, and are, we're helping uh, those charities, it's now the Boy Scouts that have a major role in, the, uh, in our operation. So that's, uh, that's something. That's good to hear. Very good to hear. But it, uh, again, it's just very slow at this point in time. And Saturdays also. Mm -hmm. And any um, um, issues with the volunteers? No, or? There, there, there are really no issues. The only other issue, that, and Ed and I talked about it, is people coming from across the street, and we do have some people that bring in their young children. And we talked about that because they wander, you know, the children wander around, and it, it can be a, a, a safety problem. So uh, we're going to tell anyone that has children to hold their hands, uh, you know, not have them, you know, walk around. Uh, so if they're there, you know, they have to be uh, close to the, the mom or dad and uh, uh, just hold their hands. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, I think under supervision. Under is, supervision is and, really and the yes, key. It's the, that's the key to it. I mean, they, if you're you can't if you're if you're picking up something or moving it you're not not necessarily holding their hand but it's distinction between whether they're off in one place and the parent is yeah. in another well be, so, you know yeah. beside the the parent uh, or you know if, if the right, parent's right. walking That's, around hold their hand but absolutely. if, if they just stand beside the yes. parent and not wander around and you know try to get on the bicycles right. and you know, the tricycles yeah. right and totally, that type I totally of thing. agree with that they right. should not be unattended they should be supervised exactly and that, that was one of the big issues that Ed and I uh, talked about, and we're going to implement that and see how that works. Oh, and the other thing is that uh, about a year ago, uh, we were separating the uh, uh, iron mm -hmm. and the, the plastics metal. and right. metal and the, from the plastics, and the uh, uh, city carting would come down with a small piece of equipment and take each pile and bring it back up, and then they decided that they weren't going to do it any longer. So I've asked Ed if he would... Uh, do it for us and he said yes he would okay so the large uh, uh dumpster that's coming in uh if there's enough you know plastic or metal we'll take it aside and he'll bring it up on top right so Instead we're not of, paying to get rid so of those things yeah so it's because getting it getting it over to that other dumpster there i think is quite expensive mm -hmm. on that end so um uh, well, we pay, as Christine put in the minutes, $99 a ton. Exactly. To, so we know. want to make sure that, and a lot of people uh, uh, bring in their uh, exercise equipment, which is very heavy. And a lot of times we're not there, because usually when they come in, we'll tell them to bring it up on top, because mm -hmm. it just doesn't go. So, uh, but, you know, when we're not around, uh, they sneak yeah. them in, and, mm -hmm. and uh, this way we have, you know, uh, uh, we can take it up to the top with the uh, heavy no equipment. Damage. Yeah, and again, there there may be better alternatives for people to rather than bringing their big uh, metal exercise equipment to the swap shop, maybe contacting the Boy Scouts directly and seeing if if that's something that they would be interested in putting yes. on their sale. And we're also uh, I've I've also talked to this individual, and we're going to have a sign, you know, uh, up uh, on the front that says. Items that, uh, you know, here is a number that you call the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. If you have any items that are really good, give the Boy Scouts a call. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're going to be doing that also. And then there are, there are just, you know, other, <clears throat> you know, organizations and places, some which will even come to your house and pick things up, like yes. Restore in Stratford. If you have large pieces of furniture, they come to Darien about every other week, mm -hmm. and they'll do it for free. So, um, 
you know, so yeah, I think we just kind of need to publicize that there are alternatives for some of these things that we find that we kind of chronically end up throwing away. Exactly. So, um, so that's good. Um, so uh, Cliff is not joining us today, um, and he did have some, um, you know, things on the swap shop that he had raised. We had a series of emails. Um, um, I um, anything else? It, you know, since he's not here, did anyone else have anything on the swap shop? Um, Craig, anything that you want to comment on? Or okay, so you know, maybe we'll continue the discussion yes. next next time when Cliff is, is with us. Yeah, a lot of those items that Cliff put on, we've discussed them for years yeah. on that end. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, we could probably take a lot of those offline because you know, we've discussed yeah, them I mean, I uh, think infinitum uh, on and, and the many, many meetings that we've had. Right, I mean, I think, you know, another important thing is, um, you know, using, you know, the communications director that we have available to reach um, residents in the town now and, and just kind of educating people like if you, you know, because um, I think, you know, one of the things Cliff had suggested was having just like one day or certain hours when people would only drop things off. And I, I think um, even I had watched the Public Works um, subcommittee meeting from last week mm -hmm. and I think, um, you know, they, they had similar concerns and I think, you know, if we can like communicate to people like if you ha just have things to drink, because it's going to be hard to like, you know, have people drop things off and then not, you know, if they want to have a peek around, you know, and to say, oh, you can't look. You can't do it. No, um, it, it it's going to happen. Right. But if people it. have things and they only want to drop them off, like, I think we just really need to kind of, you know, drum it into people's heads that the best way to accomplish that and not run into a lot of traffic is to get there early. Exactly. And maybe if you have the opportunity to go during the week, go during the week as opposed to Saturdays, but it, even, you know, regardless, go early yes. and, and you, your likelihood yeah. of being able to get in and get out is increased. Yeah. From 8 so. to 10, it's not busy at all. From 10 to, to 1, after 10, it really starts to get busy, you know, 10.30, 11 o'clock. So, uh, so, Dan, so just... If we can get items in early right you know that's that's the i think that's the way to do it and ask people to come in early yeah and they can go in go in and out and there's there's no issue with the traffic no, so no there isn't any issue with the traffic. can you just repeat for anyone listening like what again what the hours for the swap the, shop are the because hours, they're a little bit different than the regular right recycling. the hours uh monday to friday are eight to one eight to one eight to one and on saturday eight to twelve eight to twelve okay eight so 12. so it is Eight to one now, because for a while we were saying nine to one, but right. it's. I'm it's, sorry, eight. Uh, I'm sorry. On um, it's at the eight on, on Friday on Saturday it's eight thirty to eight thirty to twelve. Eight thirty, yeah, 8 to, 30 12. to twelve. Okay, but it's eight to one during Monday through Friday, and eight thirty to noon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I'm eight thirty to one. Oh, yeah, they, they've changed it. 8.30 Yeah, it's 8.30 now. Eight, okay. It's 8.30 now. Okay, so It used to be 8 to 1, but they changed it 8.30 to 1. Okay, and 8.30 to noon on Saturday. Right, 8.30 to noon on Saturday. So for anyone who just has things that they want to drop off, you know, go before 10 o'clock, and you will most likely be able to get in 100% you're in really and out. Quickly. Okay, good. Um, anything else on the swap shop before we move on? Okay, good. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. I just got the call. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. Um, so I'll move down so you guys don't Dan, feel so bag. lonely. Um, <clears throat> so the next item is sustainable CT and just, you know, um, the status of our application. Um, as you all know, we submitted the application in late August and we should know by the end of this month whether or, you know, what our award status is. Um, Kathy and... Pardon? Did you get the same email I got? What email are you talking about, Craig? <laughs> well, we can say preliminary, non-binding, and formally, it appears as though they have accepted the app, the uh, that we have achieved the goals of our application. So, did, did you get that email? I did not get that email. When I did you get that email? Let me look. Uh, James Hunt. James? Oh, maybe it went to my spam folder sometime. Here's the communications manager for 
It went to your AOL account. Okay. Uh, for sustainable CT. When? And, yeah, what's the date? Um, uh, October 7th. Uh, I don't see Oh, it. last week. Monica, Monica, me, and Carolyn were on the email. Oh. Um, they just wanted to, you know, I think it's a teaser to encourage us to RSVP to the award ceremony. Which I've done. 14. Yeah, do you want to go, Craig? Uh, that's a good question. Good yeah, I put that on here also. You're right. It's it's a Monday. It's Monday, November fourteenth. Um, it's three to uh, three to six, I believe. Three to six. Um, I'll give that a heart, maybe. Okay. Okay. Maybe we can. Um, you know, because Kathy signed up for it as well. Um, Christine, you're welcome to join us I know, too. I'm still figuring out. Chris is having surgery. And, yeah. Oh, okay. If I can go. Yeah, I actually can't. For, for I can't stay until Monday, six o'clock. I have to leave a few minutes hard. early. But um, we um, so backing up a little bit. Um, so the, the email is it's not official yet. Blah 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 blah. But it appears Darren M has met its fall certification goals. So there you go. Okay, great. I will look for that. Um, that's really exciting. Um, yeah, I would have definitely forwarded that to everyone had I, had I come across that. Um, so um, yesterday, um, Kathy and I had a meet, a virtual meeting with Kate Richard, who is a new person with Sustainable CT, and it was just kind of a sort of a post-mortem to kind of like give some feedback. Hi, Ed. Oh, you you missed me like singing your praises. Yeah, no, I don't want him to see me. Does he know I'm here? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ed. We're you, just directing Ed to the hot seat. Yeah, you you missed me saying all these nice things about what you said at the Board of Selectmen meeting on October 3rd about like what residents should do to like move all their play equipment and gardening tools and all of that out of the way of, of you know possible flooding because it just exacerbates the flooding and you and you and your crew end up pulling all of this stuff out post storm so um, we got that out but just that okay. that everyone should every resident should watch this the first hour of this board of selectmen meeting because it's really informative I'd say the, the particularly the first 10 15 minutes was very very good yes yes we talked about that the history of the flooding in town and the watershed studies and and also, you know, what, um, you know, the director of health had to say about, like, what people should do prior to a storm, like, what they should have on hand, okay. like, there was a whole list of things. I mean, it was really educational, really good. Won't go through it again, but you did a great job. The only, one, only thing that I, that I didn't, not that I didn't know, but it, it's good to be reminded is you don't need to mix bleach and ammonia. Oh, <laughs> it is very, very bad. And yeah. Like I, I just see people when they're trying to clean stuff up, they pour whatever they can. Oh no, um, and yeah. unfortunately, that's not very good. So no. that and carbon monoxide poisoning after all the, the storms that we have, people don't realize. Um, when you realize that you're, you're you're sick, it's too late. You've already you've already been infected. So and and what impacted. just not not to take up a whole bunch more time with this, but what kinds of things would people be doing that would create the carbon monoxide? Well, the big one is when they lose power, they, they put their generator, their portable generator, either in their garage or too close to some type of ventilation system that brings the air into the house. So it has to be like 20 feet away from the, the garage or something? I think something. the health director recommended 20 feet. Yeah, that's what I think I remember him saying. And also like not to use your oven to heat your house and that's things a bad like one that. Too, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that was good. I'm glad everybody got to watch it. Yeah. Unless you're baking. Yeah, no, it was what? Unless you're baking. Unless you're baking, <laughs> cooking, right. Um, it sometimes will be a good opportunity to like throw a chicken in the oven to roast. So um, heat up your home and right make your way. dinner at the same time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're, ta we're talking about sustainable um, CT and Craig mentioned a preliminary email that we received from sustainable CT that suggests that we may have um, completed everything that we needed to um, secure right. silver certification. Wow. Um, because we met our goals. I don't know if that means bronze or silver. We asked for silver. We asked for silver. Right. Did it specifically say um, which level, Craig, or did it just say your? Well, our goal was very, silver. So. Very coy. It was coy. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love it. 
Um, I thought he was frozen for a second. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so there's an award ceremony on November 14th. It's in West Hartford, so it's like an hour and a half away. And um, Kathy and I have both signed up to go. Um, Christine's thinking about it. You're welcome to come. Craig's thinking about it. Um, and, you know, we'll let the first selectman know. I, I'm sure she knows already, but we'll just remind her that um, there's that award ceremony. And, um, yes. Do you know what award we're getting, though? Is it? That's what we don't know. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. I was thinking I didn't know either. So, what you just said. The, cre the email that Sustainable CT <clears throat> sent suggested that we met our objectives. Is that how they worded it, Craig? And so, our objective was to. We had over 600 points on our application, so we needed. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see the next email. But it's, it's encouraging so far. Yes. So, um, yesterday, Kathy and I had a virtual meeting with a representative, a new person from Sustainable CT, um, Kate Richard. She was really receptive to our feedback. And, Kathy, I'll give you the opportunity to talk about, like, you know, what we, what we said. And I also have her email. If anyone else, you know, because we said that there were other people not present on the call who also had, um, comments that they would like to make about the whole sustainable CT process. So um, we'll, I'll give the email to Christine that she can put into the minutes and anyone okay. else who wants to, um, to, to um, contact her with comments is more than welcome to do that. So Kathy, do you want to talk about what we, uh, kind of an overall of what we discussed with her? Uh, yes. we, we talked primarily, we, the feedback we gave was primarily that the, oh, I think, I think your, I think your wording of um, not, things not being one size fits all, that the application process and the um, ability to answer certain questions or meet certain criteria may be different in a large community or a small community or one with a larger government or one with a smaller government and she did agree that that is feedback that has come from other people and yes it, and acknowledge very much that the majority of work is being done by volunteers with backup from paid staff in, in communities and that um, you know simplifying the process or as much as possible is is something that's on their radar now what will change is not clear but this particular woman is is involved in reviewing all the steps and changing whatever they would be in 2023 cleaning them up adding subtracting whatever so we we spoke to her primarily about that inflexibility of if you need five of something but your community only has three of them you'll never be able to do it because you right. don't have five but right you know, Stanford may have 20 of something, right. and we don't, so. Something that would be you know, super so easy for Greenwich to do, right. you know, so. Darian will never be able to achieve just because of the difference in size. Now, and it didn't affect us amassing points, but it took time for the volunteers to search out and document and then walk away from certain activities that we couldn't document on some criteria that maybe aren't reasonable for the size of the community. Right. We also discussed with her, and she was again quite open to the idea of the wording, the technical wording on certain things yes. that was hard to understand. She was very interested in any feedback on any particular action item that someone worked on that they felt, I really didn't understand this wording. She's welcome, she's wel you know welcoming that kind of feedback because she's reviewing it word for word. Right. Um, and we did talk about the, the kind of the confusion with the equity toolkit and while understanding it's important to the process of looking at looking at projects through the lens of equity that um, the, the wording or, or work, as I said to her, that it really couldn't be written as a term paper. It really had to be written as a, as a, a, staff, a staff or a volunteer could document in a reasonable amount of time. So that's really the feedback. She was open to that feedback. Um, we are not alone in that feedback. I, you know, they're going to move along as they moved out of the organization of the university, the Yukon University, how mm -hmm. they were in Eastern Connecticut. They're they're evolving as a as a you know a fully separate nonprofit. Right. And are looking at these things. So that was it. She she would welcome 
anybody's individual comments on anything they worked on. Um, and we thanked her profusely for the interns and the work of the young people yes. that help and that without them, the process could not have been completed. Yeah, we and, would have never gotten it done. <laughs> and look forward to meeting her in person on November 14 in West Hartford. Right. At the award ceremony, which was an assumption we would be there when we would meet her at that, at that event. So going back to the status, one, one assumes there is, there is a certification at some level in, in our future in the next month. Um, and we, you know, it will, it is the place where the town will have its plaque and its photograph and at the CCM meeting, which is where when we did this three years ago, it was announced or handled at the CCM meeting, they are focusing on the climate leader designation, yeah. which we did not apply for, which is another broader. And which they did not have three years they ago. They did not have three years ago. Mm -hmm. So there will be communities recognized at CCM but those are the climate leader designees and that is something we did not look at and could always look at in the future, which had right. specific action items which you needed to do. So that's that. Great. Look um, for, look for the, the announcements when they come. Right. Um, Cliff, you, since you came in, um, uh, you probably didn't hear me say this, but Kathy and I had a virtual meeting yesterday with Kate Richards a new person from Sustainable CT just kind of going over the process, kind of a post-mortem of the application. And I have her email, which I will share with you, um, because we mentioned to her that there were other people who worked on the application who had um, feedback that they might like to give on the process. So I'll share her email with you. And she's expecting to hear from other people. So um, it, was, it was a very productive meeting. Great. My apologies for being late. No problem. That's great. Um, thank you. Um, so anything else on sustainable CT? Oh, just the um, community match fund. Um, we're we're, we're um, still working on uh, getting the application up and running. That will hopefully be soon. Um, Excellent. Yeah. And this, this again, is... Um, for the um, porous, to promote, promote porous pavement, <laughs> um, which uh, is what we have in the parking lot. <laughs> yes, Craig came up with this. Um, <laughs> um, at the, the, the two porous uh, pavement parking lots at Highland Farm, which we want to be able to educate people on the benefits of that and what those are. Carolyn, and I think the promotion of that can be seen in the grant so that we can have signage in our own place so that our own citizens know. Yes. But I see the Community Match Fund announcements on Sustainable CT's social media and they will say, you know, they will ask people for money. Yes. Um, for donations, but they also show you a project that another community is doing. So I might look at somebody's garden or I might look at somebody's bike path and say, oh, and I think this is a fabulous example yes. of something that other communities might look at right. through the sustainable CT application process beyond getting the, the funds to support the signage. Right. Obviously, the parking lot's in, we're supporting. And they also do it on social media because I see them on Twitter. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's the, so across social media, they do promote the, the um, programs that the Match Fund is is working on. Right. So to your point, this is bigger than just Darien. This will hopefully encourage people in other communities to think, hey, you know, porous pavement. What is, you know, yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of that. What is that? Yes. And yeah, so thank you. That's a great point. Um, anything else on sustainable CT? Anyone? Are those of you who are participating virtually anything? Okay. Um, so the next item on the agenda is recycling. Um, I will just report on the, as I always do, the, the, um, the tonnage of food scraps diverted in, during September was just over three tons, which was a little bit less than the month before, a little bit less than August, which surprised me because August I feel like people are off and away, and September you feel like people are back in town, but it is what it is, and I actually checked I wanted to see if it was an outlier or, you know, but I, I checked the last two years and it was almost 
exactly the same for September of 2021 and September 2020. So there's just something about September. Um, the other thing about that is um, we, um, I put dairy and public schools on here under recycling because I reached out to the new um, facilities director, Kevin Munrat, in the dairy and public schools and um, set up a meeting um, with him for next Friday at 10 o'clock, um, October 21st, um, just to kind of, uh, anyone who wants to join is welcome to. Kathy is, is, um, has agreed to join me. Um, just to kind of like, you know, one of the things that I see a lot on social media is parents commenting like, you know, like I'll post something about a recycling, something to do with recycling and there will be a comment about like, why isn't this being done in the schools, you know? So, I mean, you know, we all know the sort of the, how this works and that we really have to work um, in tandem with the Board of Education and the, um, their um, staff to, to implement any, any changes. So um, that's one of the reasons why I think, you know, our new, um, we have a new board, a uh, new member, Amanda Craig, who um, is particularly interested in recycling in the schools. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to talking to him. He is, seems, you know, very interested in partnering with us. So just kind of, you know, to establish what's going on in the schools and like what the potential is for, you know, possibly increasing some of the recycling in the schools. So that's next Friday at 10 o'clock um, at 35 Leroy. Um, communications with other, oh, any comments about anything else about recycling that anyone wants to discuss? Okay. Um, communications with other organizations. Kathy, I know you attend a lot of meetings or hear from, um, you know, you have sort of have your feelers out with other organizations. Do you have anything? Um, yes, and this, this, whether this, this connects to Dairy and Public Schools, and um, it connects back a little bit here to th the town as well um, on electric vehicles. And I think what I want to announce, well, the backup is that Connecticut legislation in 2022 put targets on electrification of the, of the school bus fleets over a period of eight to 18 years. And there is currently federal grant money and state money available and considerable, you know, considerable funding for initial projects here. And this is a process that takes years to implement and is related to, in a school district, their relationships with their bus contractors and renegotiation of contracts, be it with the same vendor or other vendors. So this is a process. And it, it's not clear to me if our, our, our staff, Board of Ed, has begun to tiptoe into this road or not. Um, the Sustainable Fairfield County Live Green has developed um, quite a bit of information, you know, in, in forms of fact sheets, um, in, forms of a pre, in forms of presentations, which have been given to places like Fairfield Hartford, um, Litchfield, um, so they've begun to work with certain people with the Connecticut Southwestern Area Clean Cities Coalition. So there's information that exists, and they are offering, uh, I believe it's a virtual event next week on the Thursday, the 20th, called Solutions for Electric School Bus Barriers Workshop, because before you even get into how you would change it, the millions of things that must go to the mind of a person like you um, thinking of the technology, the funding, um, the utility issues, the infrastructure, the contract providers, the, the resistance from you know, people in your town, um, what skills do you need to maintain. So there's a discussion um, on October 20th at- It's virtual or- It's a virtual, it's a virtual and it's, it's being geared to boards of education, PTAs, community leaders, ESB decision makers. So unfortunately, we're not going to see the gentleman at the school that could direct us to that right person, but I'm 
interested in at least notifying people that this is happening. I don't you know. could. I was going to say you should send that to him. And don't know if this will be able to be viewed afterwards as often things are. But it would seem, given the funding that is coming available, and while we are not an environmental justice community, I am being told that when you're talking about 200 to 500,000 per bus um, in areas with air quality issues, even though we're not one of the direct communities we live in those places, that it's there's grants to be applied for and we should be looking at it. And even if you got it, you don't have to accept it. So there's like a process going on right now that Again, it's outside of the purview of this committee, but I think it's in, in terms of the school, but this connection to the school is important. And maybe they already know this, and I'm sitting here imagining that they don't, but I'm more than happy to. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to, you know, to, to begin. send it along. Yeah. Right. And while that is happening, I know you attended uh, the EV police talk in the, in the spring, that process of what police departments are doing um, is continuing. There's in Fairfield County, a number of communities are looking at the four. And as they're going to start with, they're not, they're not interested in going the Tesla route. And there is actually a Ford person who doesn't sell the cars, but works with the infrastructure who will come to a community and look at the community and, and look at the buildings and look at the infrastructure and begin to kind of quantify what work would have to be done if you were getting EV vehicles. Um, and I think that would be for police or municipal police. So that was been offered to you at no charge. Mm -hmm. um, I think Tony, Tony has already done that. He has, okay. <clears throat> Somebody came through to <clears throat> identify where our electric comes into the building, where we, we put the spaces. And the big question is always is coming up now is, do we offer it to the public or is it just for our fleet to Correct. start? Right? Correct. And that's the big one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so some of the grants are geared towards which way you go, right? Yeah. If Resource yeah. wants to be involved, it has to be available to the public. So some of the, the grants are, are kind of tricky that way. So Tony had somebody come over, we had to take a look at it. We're gonna, trying to get some ballpark figures on putting in two stations out back for two vehicles. Fantastic. And so, it, it probably at some point wouldn't um, hurt to verify that with the vehicle providers that this would in fact meet the needs of their kind of vehicles. I don't know what it is. Not until we, not until we pick a vehicle. Yeah, and I, I the, so. the gut feel is, I don't know what this town will do. From a police point of view, it looks like the Ford is out and people don't want Tesla. But in any event, so there's continuous work, education, people offering at no charge abilities to do planning because it may not be ready for implementation, but the planning for these things is clearly, mm -hmm. you have to know for budgeting purposes what you need next year or the following year or the following year. So, right. okay. um, so as as long as it's okay, I will reach out to the person at the board of ed. I will. I may send this to the board of ed members themselves. So yeah. I don't know if you're interested. And it's a great idea. Um, yeah, see if any. Idea. You know, if we can just begin the discussion again. It, it's going to take years. And yeah. Just getting the thinking process going. Maybe they've already done it. I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt there's much work because there's so much to know. Right, right. No, that's exciting. But um, it will happen. Yeah. <laughs> it, will, it has to be done between 2030, 2035, and 2040, depending on your community and your buses. So the school buses will not, they must be alternative fuel or electricity by 2035. Yeah. And by 2040, electric. No, there's a 10-year there's a window right. to get off of. This would make a great article. Um, you know, uh, we don't have the, the magazine that we're, okay. what, what are you holding up? I, I have an eight page presentation that explains okay. the whole okay. thing, PowerPoint, that they've given to communities in the area, not Darien. So we have a lot of information that could be written up, yes. Good. Um, when we start getting asked for the articles again, I'll let for, you know. For the, uh, the yeah. Darien. Neighbors. Yeah, it's going to be a different. I think it's format. A different name. Yeah. yeah, different name format. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, the only thing I have to report is I attended the. Um, there's a, like a monthly, you know, uh, meeting of people who are interested and involved in food scrap programs in Fairfield County, and um, there is a 
composting site that um, has been set up in Ridgefield. Um, it's sort of a pilot. Um, we haven't, we just heard that it's, it, it just started. It, um, it's not yet known whether they will accept material from neighboring communities. I mean, it's part of the Housatonic Resources Recovery Authority. So, you know, there are like 12 or 14 now, I think, towns in that. So they would most likely get first dibs. But it's just kind of the, the sort of the, the point of it is that it's, it's kind of a pilot to see if towns can start managing, if, if they can sort of start successfully managing their own food scraps, you know, as opposed to, you know, them being hauled to a commercial composting facility. So um, there was a suggestion that there may be kind of a public tour sometime in November, which, um, I, you know, I, I would be very interested in going to that and if anyone else is interested. Um, that was really kind of the, the most exciting thing to come out of that meeting. So, <laughs> um, um, anyone else have anything about um, any meetings or events that, that bless you, Excuse that they've me. attended that we should hear about? No? Okay. I, I do have one question. Has there been any reporting on the, the trial they're doing in New Canaan about with a couple of restaurants? I, I, I keep seeing you know, little notes about that on Planet New Canaan. I don't know which group talks yeah, about Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't reached out to anyone to see how, if it's been successful. I've only seen the same things that you have, so. Um, the, with the, to, the, to others listening, that there was a group that tried to plan sort of through a volunteer effort with a small number of food service restaurants. Gre and Greenwich did the same thing in the spring, yeah. get them to buy into recycling food waste, foods and you know, broader food waste would be fresh food that isn't used and then food scraps that are have, could be recycled. So it's it, there are some models that may be something we can look look into or find a connection you know, through our town of someone that might be interested. Now that we're getting more and more restaurants, um, you know, to, that you know, where you, and so there are some models that are set up that will see how they're doing it and where the stuff is being taken and what that costs and what the, what the, you know, restaurant owners think. So it, it's, it's something, if that's a new initiative kind of here at the end, but the groups we talk to may know about it and would be interesting to learn it, maybe too early. But yeah. it's a volunteer driven effort to get the restaurants. So That's one great. of the um, things that the state has, uh, that the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection has done is they've, um, they have hired basically the Center for Ecotechnology mm -hmm. as a consultant to work with any business in the state of Connecticut for free um, to um, help them increase their recycling and or um, consider the possibility of, of recycling food waste if for places like you were saying that are restaurants that have a lot of food that goes in the trash. And I've put this, I've publicized it via social media, I have sent it to the chamber. Um, I don't know if any of them individually since we don't really have anyone like on our committee who has like a close relationship with anyone there. Um, you know, I don't know if any of them individually have reached out, but I mean, it is, again, it is a service that any Connecticut business um, can get for free, a consulting services from the Center for Eco-Technology um, to help increase recycling. So it's a, it's a good thing. I don't know how much longer they're going to be able to do that. It's not indefinitely, but you know, it's ongoing. It's, it's going on right now. So, um, so that's yeah, it's not clear if that waste comes in through our transfer station or where they're, you know, how, again, I don't fully understand how some of the private businesses, you know, where their stuff is hauled and probably knows to do things come here if they're picked up from a restaurant in town? If no, or do they go directly to a? The, those large dumpsters that they pick up and yeah. dump, they'll generally go right over to city carting mm -hmm. okay. as of right now. So that it may not, it, it may not directly affect the town funding, but it's still part of the managing that overall process of process that, of that may change. Waste. That may change in the next coming months, but 
you know, some of the smaller trucks they want to divert to here. Yeah. Which will generate revenue for us now because of the change. Right, in because rates. they would be pay paying for it. Correct. But the broader concept of reducing municipal solid waste by getting the food out is a, is a, is a good a concept. What it may or may not have any financial impact on the town is what I'm just trying to understand. That's if correct. we could get the restaurants to begin to do it. You have to separate it before it gets to us. Right? That's yeah. the whole idea. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Once it gets once it gets in that transfer station, it's trash. It's trash. It's trash. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank but you. But the other thing is if a, if a restaurant was doing it, it could be like a marketing thing for them. Like if they were diverting their food waste as opposed to putting it in the trash, they could do something with their patrons, you know, when people come in to use the restaurant, they could say, this is what we're doing. And, you know, then people, it just starts sort of, you know, getting, you know, into the public consciousness that food really shouldn't go in the trash. And so that would be a way that it could reduce hours if, if, if people were influenced by, and positively influenced by what the restaurants are doing. And then they started doing it at home, and if their stuff was coming to our transfer station. So, you know, it's, it's worth keeping an ear on how those are working, whether it's something we would want to try in the future. Right. It's kind of where I'm at. Right. Um, okay. Great. Um, so, just very, since we're running out of time, um, just I just wanted to mention that. Um, the September 15th um, newsletter that comes out of the First Selectman's office. Um, I think the, the, the first paragraph was all about um, our committee and the food scrap program and Monica encouraging residents to participate in the food scrap program. And I want to thank Kathy because I feel that it was at your, um, your comments that were made at a previous Board of Selectmen meeting that really, I mean, Monica has been a big supporter of the food scrap program in general from the get-go. But I think, you know, that this particular, um, you know, opening paragraph to that newsletter was influenced by your comments at the Board of Selectmen meeting. So um, it would be interesting to know, Ed, if, if, if you know, like, if, has there been an uptick in kit sales as a result of that or, mm -hmm. you know? We just had to reload. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were you were there the other day. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, I know we had to reload because I was the re I was the loader. the loader. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, we, we can take a look at that. Yeah, it would interesting. just be interesting to see if you know if it had an impact. But it was a really good, really wonderful um, uh, thing to see. Um, and then lastly, I put um, new initiatives as the last um, thing because we had. I had forwarded the um, ordinance that the proposed ordinance in Westport for um, some restrictions on gas-powered leaf blowers, and you know, Cliff, you had commented on that, um, and had said that if we hadn't had this application to work on this year, um, I just like did a real quick Google search on um, on that ordinance, and it, it has passed a couple of their subcommittees on the RTM. Ultimately, it, it says that it's going to be going through the process this fall, um, but I, I think it successfully got through two subcommittees. Um, it eventually will, of course, go to the full RTM. But what their, um, what their proposed ordinance is, um, is so gas-powered leaf blowers could be used only between March 15th and April 30th, and between October 15th and December 31st. That's gas-powered leaf blowers. Electric leaf blowers could be used any time of the year. And then there, there uh, also there would be, they could, not, they could only be used between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. and not on um, state or federal holidays. So like, you know, when people have the day off and they want to sit in their back on their patio and enjoy it, they're not hearing these gas-powered leaf blowers go off. Um, so um, I don't know if that's something that we want to um, continue to follow. And you know, I know Greenwich has um, Greenwich and New Canaan have both been really interested in this. I don't. I just don't happen to know at this time like what what the status of of their interest is. But um, you know, I just thought I would bring that up. And you know, is is that something that we want to I would love a, I would, 
I would love some type of a pilot, um, maybe through the town, that, and I know we talked, I think we talked, you and I talked a little bit about this at some point where I went and saw demonstrations of the equipment and it's, it is more expensive yet it is quiet and it is a health advantage for anyone operating, whether yeah. it's some of the lawn mowers or the leaf blowers. So I'm wondering, I, I think it's too early to be looking at town ordinances, but I'm really interested, you know, at least from the bandwidth of this committee, this is would yeah. be my personal opinion, but I'd be interested if there was some way that we could begin to gather enough information. I, I, I know about the landscaper in Greenwich that's gone fully electric and loves it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally have one and I love it. It sounds yeah, like a hair dryer. There, there are now lawn mowers that are no. like a Roomba that do it electric yeah. and do your whole yard like your vacuum cleaner in the house. There's no noise. My electric so, is pretty loud. So Yours is loud? It's a super powerful one, yeah. Is it an eco? It is an eco. Oh, in, in any nice. event, that's what I would wonder about exploring how that might be something that we could get some experience yeah. on that you could then share with the community um, for. I think we should ban them on Saturdays and Sundays. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd love to not ever hear them again. Yeah, you know, I know. There isn't a day that goes by in my house Monday through Sunday. Oh but God, at the I moment, know. Ed, is there, I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I, I like to do that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he there, likes to be put on the spot. <laughs> is there a way to consider having, trying some of this equipment somehow, somewhere? Yeah, um, I, I don't see why not after I retire. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't see this being a benefit to my department, especially with the work that I have to do. Residential stuff is a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. a little bit more confined. Yeah, yeah. Putting my guys out there to do stuff, I, I need to put it in the most efficient right. equipment. With, with the most safety features that I can provide for them, True. as well as getting them done with it quicker. So I can't do any of that with electric. And as you're and saying that, Ed, I think I remember when I read one of the news articles about the Westport ordinance is that municipal um, was actually exempted from the ordinance. And there's a reason. Yeah. For that. Okay. And that's I don't I don't know that. So so working that that may not be the way to gather experience if you're looking to encourage a change in your community the maybe, benefits of community. maybe the pilot program with selected residents we, there's a maybe there's a grant out there that could, you can provide this equipment to certain residents to see if how it works out with them maybe yeah. that's a direction to go right i mean or with a business that's yeah. with a landscaping to, business too i mean is that what we really want to do is have every landscaper go electric or do we want to say all right you just can't use electric blowers and cause all this noise in times when it's just not really appropriate like before eight in the morning and not on the weekends. Would that affect your guys? If, do they do stuff on the weekends? No, no. Um, I know Parks and Rec, they do. They're here doing cutting, lining, and right. specific work. Yeah, I do tree nice. work on the weekends. I do. Yeah, but you're not yeah. blowing things in my neighbor's yard on the weekends. <laughs> as far as you know. As far as I know, exactly. no, I know. Um, <laughs> I think there's two issues. One is noise and the other yeah. is health. And it's, going yep. to, the, the, to the demonstrations in Greenwich, Right. The people that use it will tell you that the they are finding the enormous health benefits right. of not having the noise or the fumes. The, yeah, no, but the, the, the neighborhood wants it, right. the loss of the, the, the reduction of the noise. The health benefit yeah. would be the reduction in the right, fumes, right. So. as well as on the ears. Oh God. So um, yeah, I, I, let's watch it. I, Okay. So it's um it's one oh five now. Okay. Um, if, if anyone else have any other comments about that we, before we adjourn? Do this? No. Can we maybe ask Monica um, what her initial thoughts are about it? Is this you know whether she thinks this is something that the town might like to look into more more than we have? Yeah, sure. We can do that. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we have to go. So, um, motion to adjourn. Uh, yeah, a, a second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, TV 79, we're done. <laughs> 102.